Good evening, and thank you so much for joining me for our midweek Bible study here at Crabtree Valley Baptist Church. I am so glad that you have tuned in for this week's study. I'm going to do a couple things uh, during our study for tonight. Uh, this is March the 2nd, which, it, which means this is the beginning of the Lent season. Uh, it's a very important day in the life of the Christian, um, those who have faith tradition, faith backgrounds, because this being Ash Wednesday is the beginning of the Easter season mainly. It's uh, It ha always happens 46 days before Easter Sunday, Ash Wednesday does. And Lent is a 40-day season. They don't count the Sundays um, through the Lent season, but it is a 40-day season. And what it consists of is consists of repentance, fasting, reflection, and ultimately celebration. So it's a 40-day period that represents Christ's time of temptation in the wilderness, where he fasted and where Satan tempted him. Now, during the Lent season, um, Christians are asked to remember Christ's suffering and his temptation um, and his fasting in the wilderness. And we are called to give up something. Uh, what is it that you would like to give up during this Lent season for 40 days? And, and some people will try to um, give up things that are a sacrifice because that's what it's about. It's about sacrificing and remembering Christ's sacrifice for us. And, and basically, we're looking at that time in the wilderness when Jesus was tempted and where he fasted. So uh, if you would like to do that, if you would like to um, think about something you could give up during the Lent season, I've heard people say they're going to give up um, things that they... Uh, have a hard time giving up during the year. Maybe it's food. Maybe it's uh, something else that you've had a hard time getting away from and you want to use the Lent season as a time of challenging you to uh, be strong and to find that strength in Christ to do that. So whatever that may be, uh, I would encourage you if that's what you would like to do, to do that so that you can uh, put in your mind, in your heart, the importance uh, of this time, which is Ash Wednesday. Now, Ash Wednesday is actually a time when, when some faiths will uh, have ashes from the palm branches and, and they will make a mark, a crawl, mark of the cross on their forehead. Uh, they keep that on all day long on Ash Wednesday as a reminder of their that they need to repent and they need to be in a time of prayer. And it just brings to them a sense of reality of what Christ went through and helps us to remember who we are. You see, Ash Wednesday is about us remembering who we are and, and our um, we should be mourning during Ash Wednesday, understanding in our relationship with God. It's also a day that calls the Christians to repentance and to prayer. And so you have two different things. You have Ash Wednesday, which calls us to repentance and prayer and helps us remember who we are in our relationship with God. But the other thing you have is the Lent season, the 40-day season, which calls us to sacrifice as Christ sacrificed for us and as he was tempted in the wilderness. So this is always an exciting time for me. I love the Easter season. Um, I love Christmas, and just like Christmas, we have Advent to get our minds and our hearts ready for the birth of Christ. We also have Lent season to help us get our minds and our hearts ready for the cross and the empty tomb. And I've always felt that when we have the Lent season that we need to focus on more things than just Resurrection Sunday. You know, we kind of build up to um, Easter Sunday. Sometimes we don't even think about it much all the way up to Easter Sunday, and then we get to Easter Sunday and we celebrate the resurrection and the empty tomb, which is what we should. But there's so much more to it than that. There's so much more to what Christ did for us than that. I mean, if we didn't go through the other things, and get to the cross. And if it wasn't for the cross, we wouldn't have the empty tomb. And so as much as we don't like to celebrate the cross because of what happened with Christ, I think we need to because that's what helps us remember uh, his ultimate sacrifice and his victory that he had for us on the cross. So I would encourage you to be in prayer for this day as it's Ash Wednesday. Um, I know it's in the evening, but um, you can also pray tonight. Um, you can uh, decide tonight if, if you would like to give up something uh, during this Lent season and 
and just make this a time that you really uh, fully focus on Christ and what he's done for, for you and um, what you can do for him as well. So this is the beginning. This day is the beginning of Lent season, a 40-day celebration, a 40-day remembrance um, of Christ and his suffering in the wilderness. So um, want to talk. I wanted to talk about that a minute. I also want to tell you a couple things that I've, I mentioned on Sunday, a couple things, a couple resources that you can use for um, your Bible study and your guided times during the Lent season. One of them is the um, sheet that I, I gave out, which is the uh, Lent Bible reading plan. And, and what this is, it's through the Gospel of Mark, and it gives you 40 days of readings that you can uh, help focus your minds and your hearts on. It's just a devotional. Uh, well, not really devotional because it doesn't break down the verses. It just tells you which verse to read on which day. Um, and then you can read those. Now, if you want one that has more a devotional material to it, I call your attention to the one I mentioned Sunday, which is from uh, Campus Crusade for Christ, that their website is actually www.cru.org. Now, I tried to go on to it to find that, and I'm afraid some people, if they went on that to find it, they won't, because what you have to do is you have to Google free, day, free Lent devotions for 2022. Free Lent devotions for 2022. And you'll scroll down a little bit, and you'll see CRU on there, and it'll be a free uh, thing that you just put in your name and your email, and they will send you uh, the devotional packet. And I, I did that yesterday. I got mine within two or three minutes. And so... You can get that, and that's always good, too. It, it gives you more reflection. It gives uh, more wordage to, to what you're reading than just a scripture. Some people like just reading a scripture, and if that's what you like to do, then the reading plan that I handed out Sunday, these are on the table at the church here, uh, that you can pick up one if you would like to. But if you want more of a, a person expounding on scripture, then you'll want to do the other one that I talked about from Campus Crusade for Christ. Just a couple resources that you can use to try to uh, focus more your mind and your hearts on the Easter season. So tonight what I want to do is I want to talk a little bit about uh, some things that took place in Jesus's life um, before he went to the cross. Now one of the things I'm going to do throughout Sundays and Wednesday nights is we're going to look at sort of a journey to the cross, what what took place on tonight we're going to, and the next few Wednesday nights, we're going to be looking at studies in the book of John to kind of help us see John and uh, John the Baptist and Jesus's relationship and some of the other things that took place in the book of John. And then on Sunday, we're going to be doing a study entitled The Seven Last Words of Christ. And we're going to use our Wednesday nights in the last part of March to do a couple of them as well. But I want to start tonight in the book of John, uh, chapter 3. And I'm going to be reading verses 22 through 36. So John, chapter 3, verses 22 through 36. So this is what we read, beginning in verse 22 of chapter 3. After this, Jesus and his disciples went out into the Judean countryside, where he spent some time with them and baptized. Now John also was baptizing at Enon near Salem, because there was plenty of water, and people were coming and being baptized. This was before John was put in prison. An argument developed between some of John's disciples and a certain Jew over the matter of ceremonial washing. They came to John and said to him, Rabbi, that man who was with you on the other side of the Jordan, the one you testified about, look, he is baptizing and everyone is going to him. To this John replied, A person can receive only what is given them from heaven. You yourselves can testify that I said, I am not the Messiah, but am sent ahead of him. The bride belongs to the bridegroom. The friend who attends the bridegroom waits and listens for him and is full of joy when he hears the bridegroom's voice. That joy is mine and it is now complete. He must become greater. 
I must become less. The one who comes from above is above all. The one who is from the earth belongs to the earth and speaks as one from the earth. The one who comes from heaven is above all. He testifies to what he has seen and heard, but no one accepts his testimony. Whoever has accepted it has certified that God is truthful. For the one whom God has sent speaks the words of God. For God gives the Spirit without limit. The Father loves the Son and has placed everything in his hands. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. But whoever rejects the Son will not see life, for God's wrath remains on them. So in this passage of Scripture, what we see is we see John's followers and Jesus' disciples both baptizing at the same time. Now, according to the Scripture, they were at a large body of water, so there was plenty of room for as many people that wanted to could be baptized. And so it sounds like people were coming uh, one after another to be baptized. And, and you had Jesus on one side of the water uh, baptizing people, his disciples baptizing people. You had John and his disciples baptizing people. And it became kind of a, in the minds of John's disciples, it became a little bit of a competition. You know, who is baptizing more people? Who is getting to... Uh, be able to have more people on their side who they're being baptized. And so Jesus and John were on the same team. You know, sometimes we get caught up in, in church with doing the same thing, same thing that John's disciples were doing. Um, we ride by a church and we see how many cars are in the church parking lot and we might say, well, our church is doing just about as good as their church because we have about as many coming in the parking lot as, as they do or things like that. We start looking at numbers, looking at competition and things like that. And that's really kind of what John's disciples got caught up doing. This happened, this took place after Jesus had talked to um, Nicodemus about how a person can be born again. You remember that story where Nicodemus said to Jesus, I don't understand that. How can a person be born again when they're born once? And Jesus shared with him about how you have to be born of the Spirit and not of the flesh. That born of the Spirit is being born the second time. And so John's disciples and, and Jesus' disciples were baptizing people. And, and John's disciples came to him and said, Rabbi, which is another term for leader, a well-respected high respected person and so they called him rabbi they said this man you were with talking about jesus his disciples are baptizing over there and and people are coming to him more people are coming to him and so they were bothered by this but john wasn't bothered by this because john knew who jesus was and john knew what his role was and what his purpose was uh in serving jesus and following jesus and and john told them that john said now if you remember i told you that I was coming before the Messiah. And so that's what that is. That's Jesus the Messiah. I'm only here to come before him and not to do his work. And so uh, the baptism was nothing bad. It was good that people were being baptized. It was good that people were repenting and coming to Christ. And John didn't make a big deal of it. He said, that's supposed to happen. That's what's going to happen because that comes from heaven when it comes through Jesus Christ. And so, you know, as we think about who Jesus was, we think about who John was, you know, the title of my study tonight is Recognizing Your Purpose with Christ. There comes a time we have to recognize what our purpose is in serving Christ. You know, if we get caught up in numbers, we get caught up in, you know, how many people come, how many people don't come, what happens is we, we focus so much on those numbers that we fail to focus on helping those that are present truly grow in Christ. And I think that's what John wanted his disciples to understand. We don't need to see this as a numbers game, but we need to see this as people coming to Christ, for that is what is important. You know, it doesn't matter how many people are in church on Sunday. It doesn't matter how many people are in church at another church on Sunday. The churches should be doing the same thing, which is everybody preaching the gospel. 
everybody preaching Jesus Christ. And, and we should all want the same thing, and that is people coming to Christ. It doesn't matter if they come to Christ through my preaching. It doesn't matter if they come to Christ through another pastor's preaching or if they find growing in Christ better at this church or they find another church. That, that's not what is important. What's important is that people are growing in Christ and coming to Christ. And so I think John's disciples were getting a little bit bent out of shape by the fact that it had always been John doing the baptizing. And John even baptized Jesus. And now there's these other disciples, Jesus' disciples, that are baptizing people, and that bothered them a little bit. And, they, and John needed to clear up some expectations that they had. So what are some things that they learn from John? What are some things that John needed to help them understand? Well, one of the things was that Jesus must become greater and John must become less. I think that's so important. And it's, it's true that John knew his purpose. He knew his role. And for him to be able to say to his disciples, I've got to be less and Jesus has to be greater because John knew that he was only the forerunner of Christ. He was the one who was going to be announcing the Messiah. He wasn't the Messiah. And so when the Messiah came, when Jesus Christ came, it was only natural that people would come to Christ because he was the Messiah. And to John, it was going to be important that he realized that he was not greater than the Messiah. It's exactly what he told his disciples. I have to be less Jesus, he has to be greater. And I think we all need to understand that when it comes to evangelism, when it comes to sharing Christ with people, is that Christ has to be greater than us. Christ has to be our message that we're sharing. I mean, we can't be sharing the message of us. We can't be bragging about how good we are or how well we're doing. What we need to brag about is Jesus Christ and how he is good to us and how he blesses us and how he takes care of us. And so the first thing John tells them is that he had to be less and Jesus had to be greater. There's another thing that John shared with his disciples, and that is that there's only one way to gain salvation and eternal life, and that is through Jesus Christ. I want to share this again with you uh, in our scripture. It says this in verse 27. To this, to, to the disciples, John replied, a person can receive only what is given them from heaven. You yourselves can testify that I said, I am not the Messiah, but am sent ahead of him. And so what um, John wants them to understand, I'm going to read again down here in verse 36. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life, but whoever rejects the Son will not see life. So John is wanting them to know there's only one way to heaven. There's only one way to eternal life, and that is through Jesus Christ. While the baptism was important, the baptism itself did not save the people. While baptism is important in our lives and in our churches, that is not what saves people. That is only a symbolic act of accepting your, uh, giving your life to Christ and being uh, buried with your former life and being raised to a new life. What really is salvation is all about is repentance, asking forgiveness, and then asking Jesus to come and live in your hearts. John said that can only come from heaven. That can only come through Jesus Christ. He is the only one who can give salvation. He is the only one who can give eternal life. And so that was important for him to share with his disciples so they wouldn't be messed up in thinking that John was equal to Jesus Christ because he wasn't. John knew that, and John had to share that with them as well. So John taught them that there's only one way to gain salvation, and that is through eternal life through Jesus Christ. But there's another thing that John shared with his disciples and taught his disciples, and that is this. When it comes to accepting Christ, it is about people coming to Jesus Christ and accepting him as their Savior and the kingdom of God growing and growing. I mentioned that uh, just a little bit while ago, is that the most important thing for us to understand is that our role on earth is to share Jesus Christ with other people. Our role on earth is not to save people. We cannot save people ourselves. 
Our only role is to share with other people about Jesus and then let Jesus move in their hearts and let the Holy Spirit save them. You see, we can't do that. And we have to understand our role. So many times when people uh, share Jesus Christ with others and, and maybe the person rejects what they're saying or they say they don't want to uh, accept Christ right now, then we begin to take that personally and say, why are they rejecting me? Well, they're not rejecting you. They're rejecting Christ. And you've done your role. If we share with someone about Jesus Christ, we've done what he called us to do. Uh, I remember a time when I was a youth director in Henderson. Had a lot of youth in the youth group, 50-some youth. Um, they did a great job of attracting young people and bringing them in. And I remember one of the parents asked me if I would sit down and share the plan of salvation with one of the young girls in the group. And I said, yeah. I mean, that was my role as a youth minister to do that. And so in my mind, I was thinking this is going to be easy. I'm going to share the plan of salvation. This girl's going to accept Christ. I'm going to feel good about that, and we're going to move on. Well, I was there about a year and a half, and this was in the first few months of my ministry there, that I sat down with her and her boyfriend one night after our Bible study, and I went through the, the plan of salvation through the Roman road and talked about how the Bible says that we're all sinners and fall short of the glory of God and how the Bible says that um, the wages of sin is death, uh, but the gift of God is uh, Jesus Christ, his son, who died on the cross for our sins. And the only way to get salvation is through Jesus Christ. Ask him into your heart. So I went through that uh, plan of salvation and I, um, they were both nodding and I thought this was a done thing. And so I asked them, I said, so at this time, do you want to accept Jesus into your heart? They said, no. They said, we don't want to do that right now. And I was absolutely floored because I thought, what did I do wrong? I mean, I went through everything I was supposed to go through. I couldn't believe they weren't ready to accept Christ yet. And so uh, they left, and I was there about another year. And when I left, uh, after I had left a while later, I got a note that said that they had accepted Christ as their Savior, and they appreciated me sharing what I did with them. And so my role, I had, had done what I was supposed to do, which was sharing the plan of salvation with them. And then it took a while for the Holy Spirit to work in their lives so that they would then accept Christ and become Christians. Uh, our role, we have to know our purpose, just as the title of the study says. We have to know our purpose, and our purpose is to share Jesus with other people. Our purpose is not to save people. And I think when we realize that all we have to do is, is plant the seed or is to share that message with people and then let God work within their hearts, then it'll be a little easier for us to share the plan of salvation. Sometimes we feel like that if they don't accept Christ, we've done something wrong when we've not. All our role is is to share that plan of salvation and let Jesus work in their lives. So John told them that, said, you know, there's only one way to heaven, and that's through Jesus Christ. And the important thing is about people accepting Christ, and that only happens when Jesus and the Holy Spirit work in their hearts. We can't make that happen, but we should pray that it happens as people grow to know Jesus as their personal Savior. Then there's a third thing that John shared with his disciples, and that was he reminded them as to their position when it comes to Christ. You see, one of the things that we have to do is remember who we are. We are Jesus' children. We are his followers. We are his believers. We are not Jesus. You know, one of the things we have to be careful of as Christians is allowing Satan to give us more credit than we really deserve. So what do I mean by that? Well, as we come to know Christ and as we grow in Christ, more and more people will recognize us as Christians and as followers of Christ. And when that happens, um, there's a tendency to see us as people who know answers in life, uh, know the answers to Bible things and things like that, um, especially uh, if you are a teacher in Sunday school, especially if you are uh, maybe a, a person who's a leader in the church. Um, you're going to be seen as someone who knows a lot of things or should know a lot of things. And what happens is when people see us in that light, if we're not careful, we will allow Satan to tell us we're bigger than we really are. You know, a thing 
like pride comes into our lives and we begin to look at ourselves instead of keeping our focus on Christ. And as John told his disciples, we need to know our role. John could have very easily tried to boast himself. He could have tried to boost himself up above Christ. I mean, he was before Christ. He was the one announcing Christ. He was a preacher for Christ. He baptized Christ. You know, talk about your uh, resume builders. You know, if somebody said, what did you do in life? Well, I baptized Jesus. And you're like, well, Jesus was perfect. Why did he need to be baptized? And like, I don't know, but he came to me and wanted to be baptized. And so I baptized him. That's a, a great thing to be able to say. So when you look at this, you could say, well, John had every right to say, look at me and look how good I am and look how good I'm doing. But John didn't do that. John said, I know my role. I know the fact that I need to share others about Jesus Christ and tell them that the Messiah is coming and introduce him to people and then baptize people in the name of Jesus Christ. And yes, even though I don't understand it, baptize Christ himself. But that's my role. My role is not Jesus. My role is the one who comes before Jesus. And I think John wanted his disciples to understand that we all have a purpose in the kingdom of God. And we just need to kind of figure that out and understand it. You know, every church has a purpose when it comes to serving Jesus Christ. And I think it's up to each church through prayer, through asking God, what is our purpose where we are? I mean, that's, that's the case for Crabtree Valley Baptist Church. That's the case for Hayes Barton Baptist Church, for Tabernacle Baptist Church, for all churches, every church. Every church has the responsibility of praying and seeking God's guidance and saying, God, what is it you want for us? What is it you want us to do? What is our purpose in serving you? And I think when we see that purpose and when we understand that purpose, it will help us understand more what we are to be about doing. Rick Warren, oh, several years back, put out a study of the purpose-driven church. And I remember when, when I was at another church, we took part in a 40-day study of prayer and Bible studies as we asked that question, what is my purpose? What is my purpose as an individual Christian? What is our purpose as a church in serving God? not a bad thing to do. We need to always understand what God wants us to do and what our purpose is in serving him. And so John wanted his disciples to know we need to understand our purpose. John's purpose was to come before Christ. And I think he wanted his disciples to understand their purpose was to do exactly what they were doing, baptize people, teach people, not look over at Jesus and his disciples and become competitive about who's baptizing more per people, not to look at Jesus and be intimidated, but to understand where we are and what we are supposed to be doing. So as we close out, I ask that question to us tonight. Do we know what God wants us to do? As we look at this Easter season, this season of Lent, what is our purpose as we go through this season? I, purpose, I personally think our purpose is is to open our minds and our hearts and pray and read devotions each day of this Lent season and say, God, what is it I can do for you? We know what you did for us by dying on the cross. What is it we can do for you? And I think it's a good beginning that we look at John and him understanding his purpose so that it can help initiate us to ask what is our purpose as we look to serve God, not only in the season of Lent, but in the days after as we go on in life. So thank you for joining me tonight. I ask you if you would please to bow with me for a closing prayer. Dear God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your love and your mercy and your grace. Thank you for this study this evening. And Lord, as we begin this Lent season on this Ash Wednesday, Lord, I pray that you will help us to repent that you will help us to understand we are sinners needing the love of a loving God. And Lord, I pray that you will help us to 
rededicate our lives to you right now, asking you to help us grow closer to you. And Lord, as we go through this Lent season, help us to focus our minds and our hearts upon the cross as we get closer and closer to Good Friday and to Resurrection Sunday. So Lord, be with us. Thank you for this study tonight as we try to hear John tell his disciples what their purpose is in their relationship with Christ and help us all to understand our purpose with Christ is to share with others about who Christ is and how he can help them through his love for them. Now be with us tonight. Give us a good night's rest. Give us a good week ahead, for we ask it in your name. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me this evening.